Hello and welcome to this webinar. Today's webinar is titled Application Efficiency on Many Core Systems. My name is Mark Clark and I will be your host for today on this presentation. The main panelist and speaker for this presentation is Florent Lebeau, Staff Field Application Engineer from ARM. After the webinar, there will be a chance for questions and answers. Please direct any questions via the live chat window. We hope that you enjoyed today's presentation and I will now hand you over to Florent, who will now present the rest of this presentation. Thank you, Mark. Hello, everyone, and welcome. To parallelize an application on multiple cores, OpenMP directives are quick and easy to add to an existing code. However, it is often difficult to find the best optimization strategy. During this webinar, we will illustrate how the HPC tools from ARM help accelerate scientific delivery for all HPC platforms. The session is part of a webinar series on how to optimize high performance computing applications. My colleagues have already explored many of the topics shown on this road to performance. If you would like to know more about IO performance killers, MPI imbalance, or memory performance, feel free to have a look at our ARM YouTube channel to catch up. This webinar will lead us to investigate on core utilization and synchronization using ARM performance reports and ARM Forge. Let's illustrate the problem you may face when writing multi-threaded applications for HPC. Multi-threading enables to distribute a compute workload on a different cores of a shared memory system. It can be a many-core processor or a multi-socket node. OpenMP is a directive-based API, commonly used in HPC, which enables to do multi-threading by specifying parallel sections in the source code. Adding OpenMP directives to an application is easy, but getting the performance right is not straightforward. For the purpose of this webinar, we have modified a hydrodynamic mini-app called Cloverly, which uses OpenMP. As you can see on the graph, we would expect this version to scale linearly as we increase the number of threads. In fact, we actually reach a limit at a very modest scale. When using more than five threads, the performance collapses. Writing efficient OpenMP code is challenging. This webinar will list the reasons that explain why using more cores doesn't necessarily bring more performance. More importantly, we will explain how issues can be identified quickly and how to optimize the multi-threaded applications using the cross-platform ARM HPC tool suite. OpenMP directives enable to define parallel sections in the source code of an application, for example, tasks or iterations of a loop, which can be executed independently by different threads. Of course, everything cannot be parallelized, and one challenge is that the performance of the application is limited by the amount of code running sequentially. Either the code outside of any OpenMP parallel section or the code within this section which should be run by only one thread. Making sure that there is enough parallel work is crucial. The second challenge comes from the fact that multi-threading will add overhead to an application. Think about how the workload is distributed between threads, when they need to synchronize, when they are scheduled, or how they access data, for example. To deal with the first challenge and find out if there is enough parallel work, ARM performance reports can help. It is easy to use, you don't need to recompile the code, you can just prefix the executable in the job script with the perf report command to generate an HTML report. 
this report describes the application behavior. It also gives information about the settings used for the job, for example, the number of threads, or if you profile an MPI application, the number of processes. More than this, the summary indicates how much of the time is spent computing, communicating, or performing IOs. Below this summary, users can find more metrics to understand the efficiency of each of these aspects. Advice and guidance are given to help users understand the behavior and take action. But how can performance report help identify the amount of sequential code? When profiling OpenMP applications, the tool measures how much of the time is spent in the single call and in the OpenMP sections. On our example, 11% of the time correspond to single core execution. Performance report indicates that CPU performance looks good with a high amount of time spent in vector instructions. Increasing the number of threads should be beneficial. Amda's law predicts a speed up of 4.5 with 8 threads, but looking at the results, we are actually far from that. We have two ways to optimize the application further. Investigate on the efficiency of the parallel sections or increase the parallelism of the application. Let's see how ARM HPC tools can help with the latter. ARM map is the right tool to investigate on the source code of the application. It only requires the source code to be recompiled with the debugging flag and to prefix the executable in the job script with a map command to generate a profile. This profile is open afterwards in a GUI, as you can see on the screenshot on the right. The GUI displays the application activity per thread or process for an MPI application in a timeline. The color specifies the kind of activity, green for computations, orange for I.O. and blue for MPI communications. The source code is annotated with activity information. It becomes very easy to understand where the, the execution time is spent and what kind of activity is performed. A summary of the top function and call stack is also provided to the user. For pure OpenMP applications, the profiling results add extra colors. Like green for OpenMP activity when the threads are computing in parallel on different cores, dark green for single core activity, and gray for synchronization when the threads are waiting for others to complete work. On our example, our map clearly identifies that most of the sequential execution happens in one subroutine called PDV. More details can be displayed when selecting the subroutine in the GUI. When viewing the source code of this routine in the tool, we see that this time correspond to one single section. This explicitly serializes the loop nest underneath in one thread. To optimize this, if the iterations of the loop are parallel, this may be replaced with a parallel do section in order to distribute the workload of the loop nest on the available threads. So we have seen how ARM performance report and ARM map can help increase the parallelism of the code. However, we suspect that this is not the only performance issue here. With the same amount of parallelism, we are still far from the theoretical speed up given by Amdahl's law. It looks like the parallelization is not very efficient, and we suspect that the threads are synchronizing for a big amount of time instead of computing. How can we check this? Again, performance reports can help. When running the tool on OpenMP application, 
A section in the output report gives more information to determine whether the parallel sections are computing efficiently. On our example, we can see that this is not the case. 46% of the time is spent synchronizing the thread. Not only that, the system load is low, with only 77%. This shows that the number of active threads is on average less than the 8 physical CPU cores present on the compute node. There are many reasons that can explain a high amount of synchronization, depending on how the workload is distributed between the threads, whether they are computing for resources or not, or waiting unnecessarily. How can we determine which one is responsible for the performance loss? Looking at the OpenMP settings, we notice that the threads are not bound to the cores and dynamic adjustment of the number of threads is enabled. As a result, the operating system can schedule the tasks on eight threads or less. Threads may be migrated from one core to another, data stored in cache may be discarded and reloaded from memory. Finding the threads and disabling dynamic threads slightly improve the performance. The application now makes full use of the resources with a system load of 97%. Synchronization is down from 46% to 32% of the execution time. And the amount of accesses to the system memory is down from 68% to 59%. Using 8 threads, the application now reaches a speed up of 2.2. However, there is still room for improvement. Performance reports detect a sign of overly fine-grained parallelism. Can we use our map to tell us more? In the map, the profile shows that most of the synchronization overhead, 14%, is spent in one OpenMP region in the Apex cell kernel source file. The code viewer shows annotations in grey on several lines which correspond to OpenMP and do directives. These directives are only parallelizing the inner loop of several loop nests. What is happening is that the OpenMP runtime is making sure all the threads finish their work at the end of the inner loop iterations and this is performed at every iteration of the outer loop. To optimize the code and if the iterations are parallel, we can move the OpenMP do section at the outermost level of the loop nests in order to have only one point of synchronization instead. Our map can help investigate further whether the cores are accessing memory efficiently or if they are competing for resources. Like many other metrics, the amount of memory accesses to the system memory can be displayed in the Timeline Viewer. In addition to this, the tool allows the user to zoom in a region of interest. The graphs, but also the statistics displayed in the source code and in other tabs are automatically adjusted to the corresponding time frame. The metrics graph displays different information. The average value for all the threads or processes in the case of an API application, the minimum value, the maximum value, and the standard deviation indicated by the color shade around the average. A thin line means that all processes have very similar values. A fat shaded region means that there is significant imbalance between the threads or processes. Instead of displaying the information for the whole application in the timeline, users can also see it for a specific line of code in the breakdown window. In the screenshot display, you can see that line 177 
is performing memory accesses for 97% of the time, of which 70% seems to be vectorized. MAP is flexible, and thanks to its custom metrics interface, users can add their own system-specific or application-specific counters. They can rely on the tool to sample, collect, aggregate data without interfering with the application itself, and display the results in MAPS user-friendly interface. As an example of this, our engineering team has worked on a Papymetric plugin which retrieves more information about core usage. PAPI is an API widely used in HPC for accessing hardware performance counters, which are available on most modern microprocessors. If you have a working installation of PAPI, installing the plugin for MAP is straightforward. All instructions are provided in our user guide. The resulting profile will add new metrics to the one provided by default. Users can display the amount of L1, L2 and L3 cache misses. And on our code example, they can witness the correlation with a single section of our application. Thank you very much for attending this webinar, which gave you an overview of the capabilities of the ARM HPC tool suite on many core systems. We are going to start the Q&A session. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask.